Hi guys, it's me Jacqueline. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my March, February, and January wrap up. Now, if you're one of like the 20 people that saw the one I posted on Friday, I really hated the quality of that video. It's just, I have like perfectionist paralysis. So I was really hesitant if I wanted to post that. And then when I actually saw it after work on YouTube, I hated the way it looked. So I had to take it down. So we're going to refilm it. I feel like I can actually talk a little bit more. So I'm going to go through March, February, and January and talk about the books I read during those months. So I only have 10 books to actually talk about all three months. And I was in a reading slump. So I am going to start off with March and then work my way to January just because I feel like it makes the most sense. But if you want to see what books I read over these past three months, just keep on watching. And also timestamps will be down below as well. So like I said, March, I was actually in a huge reading slump. And in my book unhaul, I said the next video I was going to have out was this one. And when I realized I had not actually read anything when I was editing that video, I was like, okay, I need to get out of this reading slump. What is a go-to series for me? That series is the Lux series. And this is from Jennifer L. Armentrout. I absolutely love the Lux series. I first read Obsidian back in 2012, fell in love with it, immediately picked up the second book because it was out at that time, and then was waiting in anticipation for the third. This is a series that if I am in a reading slump, I can easily read and just fall into. So Obsidian is the first book. I finished this in like a flash. And then the second book is Onyx. And both of these are five out of five reads for me. They will always be. This is one of my favorite series. I have a reading vlog coming out. I believe it should be up the same day as this video. Hopefully editing me will, you know, be having fun doing that. But I really love just getting back into reading. It's one thing to be in something like a book hangover, but I wasn't even at that point. I literally was not able to physically read a book. And Getting back into the Lux series was such a bittersweet feeling as well. I first read this series when I was, oh my goodness, 13, and now I'm 23. And yes, it is different, but it will always still have that soft spot in my heart. It will always be one of my favorite series. This is a series that I absolutely adored the couple start to finish. But regardless, this is a series that I still do recommend. And I know it is one of those that I do feel like there are other books that are similar out there, especially now, given that this was written kind of 10 years ago. But still, the entire series, since I just finished binging it, is one of those ride or dies that you can finish in like a blank. And it really just got me back into reading, which is exactly what I needed. So I have to thank this series because it really helped me with my reading slump. Next for the month of February, I read a total of three books. And the first book I read is Falling Under. This is from Gwen Haynes. If you did not see my last video, my book on haul, I am unhauling this book, but this will be the last time you guys see it, I swear. So this is a YA fantasy paranormal and I really did not enjoy this one. I gave it a 1.25. Honestly, it should just be a one out of five star. I think I'm being nice on Goodreads, but it was a concept that, like I said in my book on haul, I was really excited to actually pick up. I thought it was going to be really intriguing and I thought it did kind of start off interesting, but when we developed into the story, I thought the characters lacked. I thought the substance of the story was very weird in the direction that we went in. It kind of just depleted as I kept reading on into this story and the insta love was really bad so this is not the book for me the next book i read was fighting destiny and this is from amelia hutchins and this i actually gave like a 3.5 basically this is a new adult paranormal we follow our main character who is a witch and infiltrates the fae castle fae and other paranormal creatures are known to the humans and specifically the fae can actually manipulate in a sexual manner yes there is like the smut i'm going to say but the consent in some scenes were so fine that it made me at times a little bit uncomfortable and the author really specifically states in kind of like the before of the book that this is not not one of those easy go lucky romances. It is very dark and if you don't like these themes you're not going to enjoy this. So she does disclaim that but still it is so yet again fine that at times I couldn't necessarily be 110% for it. I like the certain mystery element we had going on in this plot as well. That was really fun 
I felt like the world building was a little bit lacking for me. It was hard for me to completely be clear of certain things. I don't know why I haven't actually continued off this series. I think I just wanted to read like a different book and then I got into a reading slump and I never continued. But I have to see if the other books have good ratings and such. But yet again, I haven't really heard anyone talk about it. This was one that I kind of picked up at a will at random and I don't regret it. It definitely was one of the best books I read that month and I only read three books that month. So so yes, this is definitely still one that I think if you're looking for a free new adult paranormal romance, it's a good one to check out. A really bad new adult paranormal romance, and this is the reason I got into my reading slump, is Rejected, and this is from Jamin Eve. There was literally a part of my Goodreads review where I stated, and I quote, I don't even want to write about this book because I'm completely over it and I really do feel that way. Jamin Eve, I've heard some other paranormal romances she has written and I've heard some really good things. Now, why I found this was very conflicting, we follow our main character who is a werewolf and she's in a really toxic, abusive environment. Yes, it was hard to read, but it was kind of one of those things where the character, our main character, I didn't like care for and that sounds so bad but I didn't really like her and then we were reading all these things bad things happening and I was like I don't really like this book and the story and the writing wasn't necessarily there for me and then we have the point of action that kind of triggers this entire plot where the shadow beast comes into the picture and I was like okay yay like things are gonna pick up and I didn't even like that character. I felt like the Shadow Beast and our main character's connection I wasn't like ride or die for and I felt like even some of the romantic parts I was like okay. It was one of those things where it was kind of not necessarily on their will that they wanted to get together. It was because of a certain circumstance that happened that they ended up getting together romantically. And I really did not enjoy it. Like, I just did not enjoy this book. I would not recommend this book. I think there are just way better paranormal romances out there. I'm so sorry. Sorry to everyone else that loved it. I really wish I did. It was a Kindle Unlimited and I was like, ooh, I kept seeing it and I love werewolf, anything kind of like that story. So I thought I was really going to like it and I really sadly didn't. This was one of those things that really put me in such a bad reading slump that I literally could not even pick up good books that I knew any other given time I actually would be able to, but I literally could not even physically get through it. So this was not the book for me. If you have read it, I would love to hear your thoughts, but yeah, definitely would not recommend this one. Last but not least, we have January, and during that month, I read a total of five books. So that is the most I have read in any month so far in 2021, but let's talk about it. So first things first is I started a trilogy at the start of the year. I was really in the mood for Hades and Persephone retellings, so I ended up just yet again browsing on Kindle Unlimited and saw this series which is called The Hades Trials. So the first book is called The Power of Hades. And I gave this a two out of five stars. I felt that this was really, really too short almost. And I, I have read certain books like this. I think this is like actually if 200 pages maybe a little bit under like 190 and it just simply wasn't enough for me to really love 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 it we then got on to the second book which is called the passion of hades and this one i did actually like way better it still wasn't perfect it still gave me what i wanted which was a hades and persephone's kind of retelling but i like my hades and persephone retellings a little bit differently and specifically in this we follow a trial so the Hades and Persephone story is Persephone was in the human world and gets brought into the Hades trials and she ends up realizing that she is Persephone. She has no memory of this and she was Hades' first wife. So Hades is going through a process of getting another wife and there's kind of a background when it comes to Hades and Persephone and these other Olympians but she doesn't yet again remember that she's Persephone. So it's a lot of conflict when it comes to her actually coming into that identity and kind of understanding these memories that she doesn't have and going through the trials. It was interesting. I did read these really fast. The third book is called The Promise of Hades. I believe this was my favorite out of the three. The second and third were probably the better ones because they were actually longer as well so you 
they've got a little bit more development. I just feel like they are yet again better Hades and Persephone's kind of books and I feel like while this was one that I did need kind of at the time, it's not necessarily one that I would recommend over others. And in general, I would probably give this series like a 2.5 out of 5 stars, like all together, because the first book I think I gave a 2, and then the second and third I gave like 2.5s too. So I feel like that whole series kind of feels along that vibe. Next book I read during the month of January was The X Talk and this is from Rachel Lynn Solomon and I really did enjoy this one. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I thought this was a really adorable adult romance and especially because I was kind of anticipating it for this year. The concept of the book involves two characters who are at the same workplace. They work for a radio station and their radio station isn't really necessarily doing the best so they have this whole idea to have the ex talk and our two main characters are not exes but they end up pretending to be in order to host but they actually don't like each other so there is tension in that dynamic and they do have this banter chemistry going on and I really did enjoy the development. I don't think this is like the best adult romance book I've ever read but especially at the time I really enjoyed it and it flew by for me and I really did enjoy our characters and the developing romance at the end of the day so I still would recommend this I think it was a really fun concept the whole radio host idea and talk show and such so definitely would check it out if you aren't interested I think this is a great one last but not least we have how to make a wish which is from Ashley Herring Blake now this does deal with very dark topics and I do want to give trigger warnings for those which is emotional abuse alcohol abuse as well as grief sorry I just wanted to make sure I got that right but I really did enjoy this story through and through I was very pleasantly surprised by this story I find and I've kind of said this a bunch of times especially as I'm getting older certain YA contemporaries are really hard especially for me to get into because certain perspectives or narrations can just feel very very young and I do and can read things like middle grades and such but sometimes when it comes to these certain books especially in this case it is a contemporary and we do have a romance in here but there is a lot of these darker tones and themes and self-discovery aspects that I think really combines in a way with the romans to make such a beautiful story and i have to say our narrator which is the main character was really easy to follow along and feel for and understand i really thought this story did a great job at seeing our main character separate from certain things as well as seeing her develop and grow outside of this toxic household with her toxic mother and i think this was a beautiful romance as well there were so many cute tender moments that literally had me smiling ear to ear i also really appreciate even a side character which was her guy best friend and just seeing that whole dynamic and the support that she had from these two people that came in and just helped in so many ways so I really would recommend this one I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars it wasn't perfect perfect for me but still it was such a good read in such a great way that I could not believe almost how much I was enjoying it in the best way it was such a pleasant surprise and I really would recommend this one through and through those are all the books I read for the months of March February and January thank you guys so much for watching if you have read any of these books please let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you guys in my next video which will be a book haul as you can see from the packages down below. I have a lot of like fairy loot to do. Anyway, I love you guys. I will see you guys in that. Bye!